All right, welcome back, my dear students. In the last lecture, I gave you a little challenge, and I told you if you wanted to take the challenge of actually uh, creating a function or a piece of code that will actually reset the views in your um, table in that specific column for that specific post, you could. You could just make a function, right? Well, hopefully you took the challenge and did it. If you did not, pause the video and try to do it yourself. You're going to learn a lot more, all right? Now, I don't want you to get confused with my data here. I have a lot of clones. Right, because I just don't like to create different data for every post because it's just a waste of time. I just come here and clone everything, just like I show you how to do. But anyway, here we see some views, right? We have some views here, and we want to create a functionality that is going to delete it. All right, this is going to be pretty cool, so I want you to pay very close attention. Uh, for some of you that already did it because you are such a professional already, great. Congratulations. I'm glad you did it. When you create things like that, you know, post it down on the on the discussion board. Let people know that you did it and you feel happy about it. You know, not everybody can do that. But anyway, let me show you how to do this. So go to your view all posts. The first thing that we need to do is actually create a link to send that get request. Hopefully, you guys, some of you already uh, done this before. So, all right, we got this set up already. Let's go to where we are displaying it and let's create a link right here an anchor tag and I'm gonna wrap this post view count which is a number in that link and if I go here now you can see oops all right make sure that you put single quotes on this I'm gonna show you another way of actually echoing all this information there all right because if there is a better way and my new course which is the e-commerce uh, for beginners, it's e-commerce. I still don't know the name of it, but it's going to show you how to build a e-commerce system, like a shopping store for customers. Maybe it's already out by the time you're watching this. It's going to show you how to do this CMS a lot better. Uh, the code is going to be a lot cleaner, more organized. Since you are an experienced PHP developer now, you're going to get a lot more knowledge, and uh, we're going to be doing a lot of really cool things in that course. Just to let you know. But anyway. Um, it should be available by the time you're watching this. If it's not, uh, just wait a little bit and it will be available. Anyway, so now what we want to do is when we click on this link here, we want to send a, a GET request to a piece of code, and that piece of code is going to make this um, zero again. So what is that piece of code that we're sending? First, let's send the GET request, and we're going to be doing the same thing we did with, that, with this delete right here. So I'm just going to copy this href from the delete button right beside it and I'm going to paste it in there and instead of sending the delete all right we are going to send reset all right so now we got to detect for the reset so we got to come here to the code right below and we're going to copy this whole thing and I'm just going to paste it in here and we're going to check for reset so if we get this in the get request we'll convert this into the ID which is that's what it is actually that's the value of it and then instead of doing delete we're gonna do update so we're gonna say update uh, post and then we're gonna set uh, I'm trying to remember the column name post uh, views count it's right there equal to zero where post ID right here post ID all right equals to what the post ID and that's it right we do this and the next thing is let's just say call this reset query all right beautiful we change the name for that it will work anyways, but I like to change the name. One thing that I wanted to show you, for those of you that are always saying, hey, we should be escaping these values. Yes, you should be escaping these values. By the time you watch uh, this lecture, I should I told you that, and I don't know what lecture it was. I think it was 50-something. I told you that you should always escape your values. So let me just, from now on, do that. So that way you'll be aware of it. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break out of here, and I'm going to concatenate. And I'm gonna use this function my SQLI real scape string it's just long all right my new course I show you how to escape it a lot better than this all right so my SQLI real scape string is gonna take the connection 
and whatever you're escaping. In this case, we are escaping the this guy right here. So we'll just put that in here. All right. All right, perfect. So once we escape that, we're good to go. And that's all we need, all right? Let's come back here, refresh. We have no errors here, all right? Sometimes when something is not working, a, a better way to actually find errors is when you right click and view page source. Sometimes you get the errors down here. Right below here, you get you see errors all the way in the bottom of the screen. That's just a little trick there, just for those of you that are paying attention. But anyway, we got this one here. Let's just click on it. Let's go back, and you see now it's zero. We get this post 65. We click on it, and now we go back. It's zero, and we can make all of them zero like this. Look at that. Beautiful, right? Just beautiful. And what you can even go further with this, and you can actually put that in this uh, bulk functionalities here like reset stats or something like that and build a functionality there it's real cool right so I just wanted to show you that hopefully you appreciate it very much if you are in the discussion I'm gonna post a discussion just to let you know but uh, like it share it with your friends do whatever you need to do and I'll see you in the next lecture take care